Hello, welcome to Something Wicked. My name is Barry, and today I'm going to be building this horrible little thing. It's taken from a book called The Drillatic Dreams of Pantagruel, which was a collection of engravings released in France in 1565. And all of the characters depicted in it are gnarly, weird, creepy little beasties that look like some kind of Hieronymus Bosch fever dream. Anyway, on with the build. Before we get started, we've got to make an armature, which is kind of like a metal skeleton for our little fella. Once we've done that, we're going to pack it out with tin foil, which we're going to cover in clay. Now, at this stage, I'm not worried about detail. I'm just trying to get the basic shape. I'm going to drill him out a couple of eye sockets. I'm going to shape up his buns. And once that's done, we'll add a thin layer of Super Sculpey, which we'll use for adding detail and texture to his head. So once we've made him a new larynx, it's time to roll him a couple of eyes. Pop those into his face, and um, yeah, then it's time to move on to his legs. Once I've done those, I'll use my toad tailoring skills to cut him out a nice set of new threads. You'll notice there's already quite a lot of texture on the fabric, and that's because I rolled the clay on a chopping board that had that texture on the top of it. That's really going to come out later on when we're painting, when we dry brush it, that'll really pop. So once that's done, it's time to move on to his hands. Um, so he's going to be holding a fish and a sword, so the wire is going to be used to support that additional clay structure. Now ironically, through this whole section, my hands have looked bloody disgusting, so uh, yeah, sorry about that. A few thin strips of clay on the back of his hands will get blended in as tendons and once we're done with the hands it's time to add some detail to the fish. I'm going to start by adding some barbels before making a fin for his back, a dorsal fin, and then popping the eyeballs into his face. Braise is a medieval word for shorts or trousers. Um, now, ultimately, these are going to be completely eclipsed by the main event, so to speak. And that's because lots of the characters in the Drillatic Dreams are wearing cod pieces. Now, some of those are reasonable, others are ridiculous, uh, but all of them are a social commentary. As you can see from these contemporary paintings of Henry VIII, Pierre Maria Rossi, Antonio Navaguero, what guys were wearing these things? out in public, and the Trillatic Dreams are kind of taking the piss out of them for it. So, within the original engraving, there was no obvious way in which the cod piece was attached, so I inadvertently turned it into a strap-on. Yeah, sorry about that. For his feet, I'll take a lump of clay and cut him some toes, which I will then squiggle out into long, noodly appendages. Once I've shaped up the rest of his feet, I will add some webbing in between his toes before turning my attention to his gnarly little teeth. So the sword in the original engraving is serrated. Um, I thought it'd be quite fun to turn it into the jaw of some kind of predatory fish. So I wedged a load of pre-baked teeth into a strip of clay and Bob's your uncle. Jaw sword. So once he's all tooled up with that, it's time to turn our attention to the fish that are kind of pouring out of his guts. Once we're happy with how our fish are looking, it's time to turn our attention to the bigger fish. Now the fact that our beastie is slicing open its stomach to release fish and that it's vomiting up a fish that's vomiting up a smaller fish, 
Well, these are kind of Renaissance memes, as you can see from this 1556 picture by Peter Bruegel the Elder called Big Fish Eat Little Fish. In a later engraving, you can see a bit more detail and the text at the bottom that reads, Look, son, I have long known that the big fish eat the small. Now, that's actually a Flemish proverb that relates to the theme of a cruel world where the strong are constantly feeding on the weak. Now, there are few fish more predatory than the pike. And since the fish in the original engraving is fairly nondescript, that's what I'm going to make. So once his flappers are secured, I'm going to take some of those pre-baked teeth we made earlier and I'm going to super glue them into its face. I'm going to make the smaller fish for the big fish to be eating. And then in keeping with the Flemish proverb, I'm going to make a little worm for the small fish to eat because there is always a bigger fish. So I'm going to bake this thing in the oven while you click the subscribe button and then we're going to paint it. So we're going to start by giving our beastie a base coat of army green, which we're then going to crisscross with some black stripes. I'll spend a fair bit of time roughing up the edges of those stripes. Before adding a dark wash that can help bring out some of the texture and detail in the clay. Now I'm going to add a secondary colour to his skin, brown, which I'll apply liberally to the back of his arms and legs, before spending an exorbitant amount of time trying to recreate the detail of a frog's skin. And this was no easy task, it took me bloody ages, adding dark washes, speckling with my prison shiv brush, and then just applying layer after layer after layer of detail. Once I was happy, I added some highlights with some goblin green, before Finally, moving my attention over to his clothes. So apparently a kind of shitty brown is very in this season, so that's what we went for. And after I touched up a few more details, I used a soft tone wash to bring out some of the texture in the fabric. After that, I'm gonna combine necrotic flesh with army green to create a base coat for his throat, and necrotic flesh and dragon red to create a nice color for his gaping maw. I'll use skeleton bone to paint his smiley bones and a soft wash to dirty them up a bit. And then I'll completely change my mind about the colour of his chest and paint it brown to go with the backs of his arms and legs. The blade of the jaw sword will go an appropriate bone white. The pommel will go a nice nutty brown. And once we're done with some other little bits of accoutrement, it's time to spill some blood. Now I knew that I would want to use plate mail metal for the buckle of the cod piece, but as I was doing my research, I came across this thing. This is Henry VIII's ceremonial armoured cod piece, and it is just fantastic. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. But in the end, I just didn't think it looked very good, so I ended up painting over the whole thing and turning it black. Anyway, now we're done painting his sexy bits, it's time to paint some fish. So a dark wash will help bring out some of the detail in the fish. And then we're gonna use copious amounts of gloss varnish to make anything fishy or froggy glisten and gleam. I'll paint the whole of his eye black before doing a clunky piece of product placement in a desperate bid to attract a channel sponsor. I'm then gonna cut out his pupil using this incredible miracle material, stick it into the middle of his eye, paint yellow over the top of the black, and then use a scratchy scratchy motion to reveal some of the darker color underneath. And once I'm happy, I will pull back this masking tape of the gods to reveal the pupil underneath before applying a soft tone wash to really help the colours pop. So, we're in the last leg of the video now. All that remains is for us to paint the bigger fish. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking with it. This is a new channel, it's taken me three months to create this creepy little bastard. And if you fancy encouraging me to make more, then please consider subscribing, punch the like button, leave some comments down below, and I promise I will continue to make creepy little things for your horrible little eyes. 
Otherwise, we're done with the paint and it's on to the money shots.